about a bunch of rhyming words. The big deal is that poetry is like the most romantic way to express yourself. It's the language of love. <gasps> Speaking of love, there's a boy who talks my language. Clover, sometimes I get the impression that when David's around, you completely ignore Sam and me. Hi, David. Hey, Clover. So, did you write your poem? Hi, David. <laughs> <laughs> So like I was saying, did you write a poem yet for lit class? Oh yeah, I did, but I'm kind of afraid to hand it in. I'm just not sure if it's good enough. I love poetry and all, but I'm so afraid of rejection. Really? What a coincidence. I love poetry and I'm totally afraid of rejection too. Then you must be afraid all the time. <laughs> hey, maybe after you write your poem, we could get together and give each other constructive criticism. Kind of like a study date. <gasps> Did you say d -d date? See you Saturday night. <sighs> <laughs> Toodles, Mandy. I'll let you know how our date turns out. Oh, oh! A poetry date? Don't bother. Sounds about as thrilling as watching nail polish dry. Oh! <laughs> so, what were you saying, Alex? Just that every time David's around, you completely ignore. Oh, that reminds me, I better call my personal shopper and tell her to find the perfect outfit for my date with David. Ah! Ah! Evil cell phone battery, how can you betray me at a time like this? Come on. Huh? May I? Whoa! Yeah! He'll call you back. Okay, now, how do you even use one of these things? Just put a quarter in the. I don't have time to get whooped right now. I have an urgent call to make. Uh -huh. Great. Now I'll never learn how to use a payphone. Hello, girls. Hi, Hi Jerry. Jerry. Jer, can't you use other whoop agents? I have a date with David and. No time, Clover. I need you girls to investigate a series of mysterious and violent abductions. Fortunately, one intended victim managed to escape an attack in his own home. And you want us to pay that person a visit? Correct. Oh, and before I forget... You are cordially invited to the annual Whoop Company picnic to be held at the Beijing Zoo. <gasps> Sounds fun! Ooh, I wonder if it's too tacky to wear a leopard skin skirt. As long as it's fake, I don't think the leopards will mind. By the way, attendance to the picnic is mandatory. <laughs> In that case, I'll RSVP now. Me too. This totally reeks. The picnic is the same day as my date with David. There, there. Boys come and go, but a whoop is forever. Now, here are your gadgets. Tortoise shell magnifying shades. Faux snakeskin parachute purse. Net blaster mascara brush. Scanner watch. And the Noggerhide biker chic lasso belt. Oh, this'll go great with my new pants. According to Whoop, the man is a zoologist named Jacob. Huh? Ew, look at these nasty scratch marks. Maybe Jacob should manicure his fingernails. Fingernails? More like claws. Who, who is it? We're here to investigate your attack. Uh, sorry about that. After the attack, I just can't take any chances. Do you have any idea who would have wanted to attack you? Well, I don't have any enemies to speak of. Everyone likes me. I'm usually the life of the party. Remind me to skip that party. One thing's for sure, though. The person who attacked was cold and heartless. He wore a fur coat made from a very rare South American polar bear. Heartless huh? and unfashionable. Fur is so out. Do you mind if we come in and look around? Sure, no problem. I'll make us some tea. It's about the only thing that calms my nerves these days. So, did you tell David you have to call off the date yet? No, and I'm really dreading it. I know how sensitive he is about rejection. Oh well, here goes nothing. Hi, David, it's Clover. Listen, there's something I need to tell you. Hey, Clover, check out this poem I wrote about our date. 
You wrote a poem about our date? Clover, Clover, you are perfection. I can't wait for our date. <laughs> I hate rejection. <laughs> so, let me hear one of your poems. Oh, uh, you know what, David? Um, I'm going through the canyon. I'm losing you. <sighs> huh? Could this day possibly get any worse? He's gone. Who, or should I say what, abducted him? Poor Jacob. All that's left of him is his shoe. This might actually tell us something. I'll check it out with the tortoiseshell magnifying shades. Hey, there's a blonde hair on it. Let's run it through the scanner watch. It's a hair from the same rare polar bear Jacob was talking about. So it must have been the same person who attacked Jacob the last time, because they're still wearing the same coat. Judging from the damage to that wall, I'd say it was the bear itself. Hello? We're in the middle of a city. Last I knew polar bears lived in the snow. Let's call Jerry to see if there are any polar bears in captivity around here. Hello, girls. Hi, Jer. Do you have any record of South American polar bears in captivity? Let's see. Oh, yes, there was one. But it recently escaped. And oddly, it was at the Beijing Zoo, the same place we're having our company picnic. Which reminds me, do you think we should serve potato salad or ambrosia at the picnic? <sighs> Neither. Thanks, Jer. Gotta run. But, but I... I got it, I got it. If I tell David our date is off in a poem, he won't take it so hard. What rhymes with, I'm dumping you? Uh, merci beaucoup. Can you forget about your poem? We've got to get to the bottom of this case. Oh, my new volunteers. I'm glad you're here. Three of my most reliable staff members haven't shown up for work at all this week. That's weird. All the people who are missing seem to be animal workers. We're glad to be able to help. Did you see that? He offered me the ball all by himself. Good monkey. Actually, Sherman is a gorilla. They're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Now, would you girls mind cleaning the polar bear and condor cages? Neither have been tended to huh? since the animals went missing last week. Maybe this is why the employees stopped showing up for work. There's no sign of forced entry or exit, and no sign of foul play. Maybe it was an inside job. Sherman, this should go a lot further than a bunch of bananas. Hey! What are you doing? Huh? Sherman, what the... Look! Sherman got loose! Hold it right there. Your cage is back that way. Did you see that? He's like a track star. How he does against my lasso belt. Gotcha. Don't be so quick to congratulate yourself. I'm far too intelligent to fall prey to your foolish little gadgets. Ta-ta, ladies. I'll see myself out. Okay, that was really unexpected. Huh? Now who's the intelligent one? I do not have time for your shenanigans. Oh! Put me down, you crazy monkey! <sighs> He's got Alex! How dare you! I'm a person! Okay, either I'm hallucinating or that gorilla just drove off in a car with Alex. I hope he's a better driver than she is. This is crazy. One second, a man was holding this device to Sherman's head. The next, Sherman was behaving with human dexterity. I wonder if this thing is responsible for the way Sherman was acting. Okay, I want to know who's responsible for that ape slobbering all over me. Ah, if he can drive, he can certainly pay the dry cleaning bill. I better hurry back inside and make sure the rest of the animals are secure. 
And we better contact the authorities about Alex. Sam, I know you're really into recycling, but if you need a tissue, just ask. Let's run this through the scanner watch. Maybe we'll get a clue from Sherman's saliva. Look, it says Sherman's DNA is half human, half simian. Weird. Let's check it out with Jerry. Hello, girls. What do you think of coleslaw as a side dish? I think we have more important issues than side dishes. A talking, driving gorilla just kidnapped Alex. Yeah, we just sent you a very strange DNA sample. Well, I see what you mean by strange. The human half of the DNA belongs to a zoologist. I don't know who the gorilla half belongs to. Jer, do you have an address for the zoologist? I've just forwarded it to your compounder. And girls, need I remind you that I want Alex safely returned and all of this figured out quickly. You need not remind us, Jerry. Okay, let's pay a visit to the zoologist and see why his DNA is in Sherman's spit. <laughs> I hope Alex is okay. You don't think Sherman would hurt her, do you? Clover, hello? Sorry. Talking with Jer about the picnic reminded me that I still have to cancel on David. Just tell him you have to reschedule. That way he won't feel rejected and you still get to go out with him. Reschedule, of course. And if I tell him in a rhyme, he probably won't mind. Hello, hello. I hope you're not feeling low. David here. Hi, David. It's Clover. I have something important to tell you before this call is over. Sorry, but I can't keep our date. Can I move it to next Friday so I won't be late? Wow, you are a good poet. Unfortunately, I can't make it next Friday. I've got a date with Mandy that night. <gasps> with Mandy? <laughs> Never mind. Saturday's just dandy. <laughs> Here, Sherman. She and her spy friends tried to stop me from escaping the zoo. We were trying to save you. A city street is no place for a, mo a gorilla. <laughs> Pipe down, Missy. It appears my plan is coming together quite nicely. I must congratulate you, Sherman, on a job well done. Thank you, sir. Without your selfless dedication, I would still be living like an animal. <laughs> This place looks like it's seen better days. Something about this veterinary hospital smells fishy to me. Huh. Check out those paw prints. What kind of animal walks on only two paws instead of four? Another locked door. I guess the only way to go is up. Grab hold. Mental note to self, never climb through a chimney wearing dry clean only clothes. Sam, Clover! The talking animals put us in here and they did something weird to Jacob and the others. Don't worry, we'll get you guys out in a jiff. Not so fast, ladies. Hey, pause it off, you creeps! Get comfortable, girls. This is your new home from now on. I don't know what you think you're doing, pal, but I wouldn't count on us being in here for long. I am not your pal. My name is Dr. Fox, and what I think I'm doing is empowering animals to rise up against the humans who've kept them in cages for so long. Um, excuse me, am I the only one who thinks it's a tad ironic that this wacko's name is Dr. Fox? Is it your DNA mixed with Sherman's? Credit my ingenious DNA transformer which allows animals to assimilate their DNA with mine, thus increasing their brain power. Now, I'll transfer my DNA to this ordinary lab mouse. Who are you calling ordinary? Impressive, is it not? It also works in reverse. That is to say, I can administer animal DNA to humans. Ah! 
So you turned Jacob and the others into animals. That's just cruel. Now, go forth and carry out our mission. There's a new mission now, Dr. Fox, to put all humans in cages, but not before turning all of you into animals. Wait, this isn't fair. I liberated you. That's bizarre and creepy. And yet, somehow it's an improvement. Come, my brothers. Time to free our friends and embark on total domination of the human race. Turn them all into animals. Apparently, the animal's aggression is a side effect Fox didn't count on. <laughs> You brute! It'll all be over with soon. We've got to get out of here and do something before Clover gets turned into who knows what. There's our ticket out. We just have to get him over here. Ha! Try this. I don't know what I would have done if I Oh, looks like you were administered a little canine DNA. Uh, what am I going to do now? I have a date with David coming up. We'll deal with it later. Right now, we have to stop those animals. Thank you, Shaman. It's great to finally be liberated. Don't mention it. Power to the animals! See you too, Clover. Maybe that wasn't my best idea ever. Okay, spread out and round them up. Round them up how? with our gadgets. Huh? <laughs> Don't even think about it, Clover. Last I heard, you were king of the jungle, not king of the city! <laughs> Lucky I'm a fellow animal, or I'd make a person matching boots out of you. Streets up. Way to go, guys! You're driving all the animals back to the zoo! Hey, it's working! All except one, that is. Let me go, you monkey! Don't call me a monkey! 
animals out of the The animals will rule the earth! Alex, catch! <laughs> I hate to put a damper on your plans, but take this, Mr. Monkey! Accessorize, Alex. Now let's return the rest of the animals to normal. And you too, Clover. <sighs> Congratulations, girls, on another job well done. The whole experience made us realize how unhappy the animals were in their cages. I'm glad they decided to turn the zoo into a nature preserve. Now everyone is happy. Everyone except Clover, that is. I guess I have no choice. I have to call David and finally cancel our date. Hello? Hi, David. It's Clover. Listen, I have some bad news. So do I. I don't know how to tell you this, Clover, but I have to cancel our date. You do? Yeah. I forgot that I volunteered to work at the Beverly Hills Animal Shelter today. Sorry. I can't believe it! I feel so, so rejected! Well, gotta go. The animals are waiting. David? Wait! Don't go! I can't take this kind of rejection! <laughs>